Good morning, Cyber Traders. Welcome back on this Thursday, the 18th of July. How's everybody doing? Good to see you, Ben. Good to see you, Wayne. Good to see you all. Chuck, Dave, Daryl, Grant, good to see you. All right, Casey, everybody. All right, let's get to it. So everybody knows the news that's going on with Netflix. Netflix did not meet earnings yesterday. Apparently, their subscribers went down a lot. That's a hell of a little bit of a correction there. But you know what? From the Christmas crash from 240, whatever think will be at 240, but going right back to 380, this thing is obviously taking a little bit of a correction right here. Looks like we're coming right around here with support. We're going to talk a little bit about that because it is affecting two other stocks like IQ and Roku. But before we do that, let's just go over what happened yesterday because I thought yesterday was actually a pretty good day. Not a lot of winners, uh, which is okay. You know what? It's, it's a great time to learn. Classes are going on, so that's really what matters. But let's just talk about some of the stocks that did make some moves. Uh, I want to start off talking off with uh, talking with uh, this about the CRC. Uh, this was a short all day. And uh, the afternoon, it pulled... Uh, in the afternoon... It pulled the top, it was on the top of the list, and you could see how the stock right here, just like the trend is your friend, don't want to buck that trend. You could see how that stock just literally just came right that back down. It was a nice afternoon trade, too, because around that 2.30 time frame at 16.50, you could see it went all the way down to 15.60. You know, it's a nice little buck move right there, you know, and not only that, but you could see it was contesting some support levels back in the Christmas crash, but what a great trade. Love that stock. Got some good volume. A lot of you guys did well on it. Give yourself a round of applause. Uh, Gold Minings did well, too. All the, the J-Nug, J-N-U-G. All those did pretty well. And the Nugget, those things just kind of really been taken off lately. I mean, look at this stock. Since, uh, since, um, since June, it literally have a double. I mean, where's, where's you know, Grant? Grant, what's going on with gold, buddy? It looks like all these ETFs, these miners are moving all bullish, right? Nugget, another one right there. You guys killed it on that one, 14 to 32. Great movers. The only thing about the ETFs, you just got to keep in mind, you got to be at least a minimum of a level two trader because these ETFs are pretty volatile, okay? And, you know, with that, you kind of lose the benefit of following the level three and the level four it kind of makes it a little bit difficult to follow that kind of stuff. But overall, that, that those did pretty well. And the big one, I just want to finish off this last one before we go to the watch list, is the GS, the GHSS. That one was great early this morning. That one just out of the gate, boom, buck forty three dollars. You're done at ten thirty. Game over. That literally was probably the biggest winner of them all. So overall, it wasn't a bad day. Not a lot, uh, not a lot, but uh, but few. How's your goal doing, Fausto? Bill's asking. You know what? <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm losing money still. Um, I was one of those suckers who bought it at 1600. You know, I actually bought the uh, the, the the gold itself, and uh, I rode all the way to about 1900 because a couple of my big uh, gold friends told me the thing's gonna go to like four to six thousand. So, um, you know, I've been holding it ever since. So, you got to remember the problem with gold, Bill, is that when you buy gold itself. You know this. You know the the cheapest you can get is a forty a forty dollars spread. There's an actually really really big spread in gold that people probably don't uh, when you don't think about it when you talk about spot. Um, they're like, yeah, oh yeah, I want to buy gold, yeah. But you got a forty dollars spread there, and when you think about it, some people don't realize the 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 uh, the, the what that actually means. Other than when you guys are here and you see what how important it is when we talk about in phase one. Um, you know, because remember, you're in class right now, and one of the biggest things that we teach, the most important thing, is I always say this all the time, it's not us teaching you how to make money, it's teaching you to stop losing it. And some people just don't realize to buy something, the spread, it could be so big that they're, just like in options, huge spread, you know, um, they're already in a hole just to break even. And it makes things very, very difficult. That's why the spread is the most expensive part of the trade. It's not the ticket charge where people look at the opposite. You know, I always say this all the time. I, I, back when I started 20 years ago, I used to pay $25 a ticket with a quarter, with an eighth spread. We did fractions back then, fractions. And you had to guarantee a thousand shares. And you're getting people make a big deal that, 
the, the, you know, paying five dollars a ticket and they still can't make money. Well, guess what? That was like that. That was the least of our problems. It was the spread that made things very expensive. So think about it. Since we bought a stock back 25 years ago, before they went to fr went to decimals, we were already down $125 plus a $25 ticket, and we didn't even sell the stock. So we had to make $150 just to break even on per ticket. If you remember back then, and we and we made money back then. Yeah, yeah, those were the good old days. And, all right, and uh, and you know what, Ken? The funny part is. The hardest thing to teach back then when I, when, we, when I was teaching new traders is math. You know, uh, it's, it's amazing that, you know, when you deal with fractions, you know, that was probably one of the hardest things to teach. But anyway, let's get back to the watch list because there's a couple of good stocks I want to talk about. First of all, I want to talk about Netflix. So Netflix missed earnings and the thing's all over the place. They didn't get as many subscribers as they liked. And obviously, we're not trading Netflix because, not because um, you can't make money with it. Who the hell wants to risk $300? But you know what you can trade that's following with it? IQ. This is the, uh, the Netflix copy of China. It's so funny. China like copies every major company we have. They copy Starbucks with LK, and they copied IQ with, uh, with Netflix. But anyway, we made a lot of money on the stock when it went public, too. Uh, if you guys remember, we did pretty well with this stock. But anyway, this stock is obviously taking a hit because of that. And also Roku, R-O-K-U. Also, obviously, we're not. This is a little bit out of our price range, too. I mean, some of you could probably trade it. Some of you level four and five traders, but probably the IQ would probably be better up um, in your league. All right, CODX. Let's start going through some um, something a little bit more affordable. Um, you can see this one is gapped up pretty nicely this morning. It's got a nice little flag on it. Four million shares trade the stock. Some of you remember we traded it. Um, I think it was in January when the stock gapped up and went from a dollar to about almost four dollars or four hundred percent. So we know the stock can move. So let's keep an eye on. Let me fix my time frame over here. Two minutes. There we go. All right, that one looks like it's pretty good. OTLK is also moving pretty nicely this morning. And you know, listen, it's not a lot going on this morning. But one thing I do like. Is that some of these stocks are trading a lot of mark, a lot of volume in pre-market. You got this one OTLK. You got a twenty-four thousand share buyer that's sitting here at two twenty-four already. So we know we're at pretty big support levels. Uh, the stock took a big hit. You could see it from ten all the way down to about a dollar. Some of you remember we did trade the stock. We know the stock can move. Okay, we traded this back in June when the stock took off. It went from a dollar to about four dollars, and it was good for about three days. So go back to your journals. Look how you trade it. Check your notes. If there's anything could remind you uh, that how the 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 uh, uh, the trend was or the personality of how the stock traded, knowing what level it was. Remember, the big thing is I know what you're covering this right now in class is your journals is how to take very good notes because I always tell you this: you're gonna trade these stocks again. Okay, you see us trade these stocks. They get, you know, if they go up big, small, whatever it is, VISL, CEI, or it, OTLK, you're going to trade them again. It's very important you follow them because you're going to, you, you know, you want, you want to remind yourself, was it a good, did you do good or you did bad? Now, this one, I don't know what's up with this one. I, I, I kind of was a little excited about this one, but she's starting to break lower lows. I'm starting to see some orders on a bid getting hit. So I might scratch this one out. It's only up 10%, but she was up a lot more. She was up at two. 30 this morning um not really being cooperative but i thought maybe i don't know we'll, we'll, we'll put this as maybe uh let me see uh, phase two let's let's call it uh if, if the other ones don't work out maybe we'll come back to this one but you never know when they open up we'll put it on the watch list i like the volume if you're a level one trader this might be up your alley stocks up 11 percent cheap low stock good spread great volume so I know we have some beginners that still, you know, still trying to learn a little bit. This might be up your alley right here. If you're still uh, a deer in the headlights and you're afraid to hit the button and don't know what it's like, you know, this one looks like it might be a little active this morning. The other big news that you're hearing a lot about is eBay. Now, eBay also had good earnings after hour after hours. Shockingly, you know, eBay was, I remember the uh, one of the big brand names when I first started. I mean, eBay was one of the one of the original dot com stocks out there. If you remember, 
and took a huge hit. I mean, Amazon destroyed eBay. eBay was like, uh, Amazon was uh, eBay's biggest competitor. And uh, I mean, you could have done the same thing, but it looks like eBay is starting to make a little bit of a comeback. You know, it's it's got a, it looks like it's testing a higher highs. Let's see what happens here. But overall, pre-market, it's it's doing nothing. So that might die. And uh, what else we got here? Oh, I wanted to talk about this uh, MBRX trade. Now, for some of you who remember this stock, um, this is also going to be one of the sleepers on the watch list because you remember this back in April. This stock went from a dollar to three dollars. We know the stock can move. It's got a, it's got some decent volume. I've seen these things come out of nowhere and they pop. So I just want to put it on the radar. Just keep an eye on it because the stock uh, was one of those nice, really good short squeeze that we traded. And last but not least, XBIO. The stock is getting decimated. You saw it would happen the last couple of days. So um, I'm just want to throw this on a watch list. You might might get a bottom fish, but as we know, biosciences these stocks usually don't come back. Um, I always like to think that sometimes the people who own it yesterday they find out this morning they got destroyed. They might average down, might cause a little volatility in it. I don't know. We'll just throw it as as, as uh, uh, throw that in the part two. You know. Phase two, if one doesn't work out, maybe we'll consider that. But other than that, I mean, listen, it's not a big list. It's not great, you know, shockingly for a Thursday, but what is what it is, all right? But we always find new ones that do pop up when the market opens up. All right, guys, anything I'm missing I did not call out? Anybody else find anything? I think that pretty much does it. Yeah, I think you guys found the same thing I found, right? Okay, so, um, all right, so guys, before we go, just remember, big day today. Uh, we got open house that we do every Thursday at 12 o'clock. So if you, have, you know, go out there and let your friends know, tweet it, uh, Facebook it, you know, email anybody, get them in there, let them see what we do. So open house is going to start uh, today at 12 o'clock. And then don't forget, uh, C2 classes of uh, phase two is continuing. Greatest talk. And the big, big event, my old friend, uh, Tom Sosnoff. From Tasty Works, the founder of Thinkorswim is going to be coming on on Tuesday, July 30th. He's going to talk about his platform. He's going to talk about trading. We're very fortunate to have him. You know how what a busy guy he is. He's uh, one of the most respected people in the industry. So make sure you guys register for that. Let everybody know it. And uh, especially if you're an options trader, you know, you want to keep an eye on it. All right. He's the greatest guy in the world. I'll be honest with you. I Done so many videos with him, so many events with him. Been known him for, it's got to be over 10 years now. So when he first started the company, I was there uh, when he built it. It's just a great success story, but he's also just a talented guy. So don't miss that opportunity to meet him and uh, be registered for that event. All right, guys? Guys, good luck, everyone. Happy trading. And uh, we'll see you for the other, for cl if not class, 12 o'clock in the afternoon meeting. For all you new members here, hopefully you guys are having a good time and learning it. Look forward to talking to you. Just let us know. And always keep in mind, trading, the greatest job in the world, but it's not for everybody. And you know what? That's okay. Good luck, everyone. Happy trading.